back everyone to another full proper video this time and uh, like I said um, I've been playing around with this reaction a couple times well by a couple I mean just once before and um, obviously the yield was subpar but this time we're going to scale it up and we're going to do it properly because I did the stoichiometry by hand this time instead of relying on chem draw which messed it up so yeah, so I'm going to be following um, this pattern here on the screen. I'll link it in the description. And um, yes, it is an interesting product for sure. And um, the reason why I'm synthesizing it is because it is the it is the uh, precursor for the active ingredient in these things, which are nasal decongestant sticks, which are just little cotton things soaked in fat stuff. And um, yeah, you'll recognize that structure there is very, very interesting. So no, there's like no data about synthesizing this stuff whatsoever. My, my first thoughts, of course, would be hydrogenating P2P, but P2P is very, very, very annoying to get and also very suspicious. And before, I can already feel the crackheads asking, can you aromatize this to P2P? No, you can't. Shut up. Leave the video. I don't care. We're not here for that kind of chemistry. We're here for actual science. I want to use this fancy reactor for something that's not just something like a distillation. So, now I made cyclohexane. This is cyclohexane I made myself, so I didn't have the uh, amount the patent used. So, here's what I'm using adjusted, of course. So, we're using 58 grams of cyclohexane. This is freshly prepared. Well, prepared yesterday. 700 milliliters of glacial acetic acid as a solvent. Uh, 410 grams of uh, acetone as a reactant and in our two catalysts down here we have um, cobalt uh, 2 acetate and manganese 2 acetate crushed up and powderized it and um, I, I forgot the amounts I used here so I'll throw them up on the screen right now that's that and that's that so let's just jump right into the synthesis now a quick overview of this reaction of course is that we're just going to be reacting all of these together and we're going to heat it and add oxygen and then we're going to separate it later so let's start off with our cyclohexane because it's smelly so all that into there now you don't need a three liter reactor for this you can use a two liter two neck flask but i don't have one of those or three neck flask a three neck flask is more ideal so there's our cyclohexene. I'll go ahead and wash that down with some acetic acid, which is our solvent for this reaction. And now we add our catalysts. So there's the cobalt. And um, there's the manganese. Now the cobalt will actually dissolve into solution, at least uh, that's what it did the first time. Uh, the manganese appears to not dissolve, which is really interesting. And then we'll just go ahead and mix it and now we add our acetone and that brings our volume up to about half the reactor so you can see why I'm doing it in a large thing now mix it and I'll go ahead and set the apparatus so like I said we'll be heating this up adding oxygen and the letter it stop Ignore this power supply, it's not in use. As you said earlier, we got a pump to pump air in. We have our heating control set up for 60 Celsius. And we have our stirring and air pump. So, there we go. And you can see, as I was setting up, I was letting it warm up. And uh, you can see it changed color from that purplish color to this brownish color. So that's a sign of it actually reacting. And I would just leave it like this until it, like, it stops reacting. After a while, it returns to that purple color. So let's run the oxygen and the stirring, and it will promptly start changing colors again. So uh, here's the setup. I got the condenser. You can see acetone in there is already boiling, and uh, this will collect any liquid that comes over that escapes because, um, of course, we're running air through, so some of the vapor gets carried over. And then this tube just vents it outside because I can't leave the fuel when running overnight. Um, I'm not allowed to. So. It's already changing to brown again once we start the oxygen stirring. So it's oxidizing now. The temperature's at 70 Celsius, so I've decreased this a bit more. And I should keep it around the right temperature. Okay, so at the exit here, no longer sounds like hexene or acetone, so call that done.
so it's starting to boil now. So I'll go ahead and start vacuum the leader to keep it at a constant boil because stirring through this larger heating mount is really difficult and I don't want to do overhead stir because I'm lazy. So I'm just going to use a classic vacuum leader for this. It'll dial down to a reasonable boil rate. So it's running under pretty much as high vacuum my aspirator hole. And you can see there's some liquid cut that's in here already. So yep, there it is. Now it's later. And it should be good. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you touch it if it goes. So we replace all the console tray. staring at this. I mean, I can just leave this here. I'm gonna go play Minecraft now. Okay, it's been about three hours. The garage has not burst into flames, and uh, it looks like it stopped boiling. So I think this is our crude psychohexalacetone. That is a lot of it. <laughs> so here we have should be crude cyclohexylacetone and smells like acetic acid and cyclohexylacetone. So uh, now I have to steam distill this. Uh, there's probably still some acetic acid in there, but I'll just steam distill it all over and um, it looks like tar. It's probably mostly the coal and metal and all that. Okay, so steam distillation is going now. Let's turn up the starting to get it boiling faster. Well, you know what I mean, nucleated, so turns more steam faster but yeah and um this is getting hot of course i, I will have to apply external heating uh probably just with a heat gun but uh we'll start getting condensate over and um yeah behold there's our oily condensate and there's drops of yellow oil yes it is supposed to be yellow or i think anyways at least the last sample i made was also that it's gone more uh yellow because i heated it to try to dry it but yeah Amazing. Okay, we're gonna have to calculate yield later and see how much this time I got because if it's a lot better than I know that chem draw is being stupid. If it's bad, then I know the patent's kind of garbage. Okay, so at this point, the bulk of it is distilled over because if you look in the condenser there, there's no longer large beads of oil. There's only tiny droplets. So that leads me to believe that um, this patent most definitely is not being completely truthful. Because, well, they just directly just say, oh, vacuum is still the rod reaction mixture and you'll get your pure cycle hexacetone. Uh, no, uh, I have to steam the scope because it's freaking tar in there. But this leads me to believe that they likely lied about some part of the reaction because, you know, it should have a lot more yield than that much based on how much cyclohexene I put in. Now, I don't know which part is a lie, but due to the tar, I believe what either one of the catalysts actually um, destroys the product or... Um, Maybe the solvent does, I'm not sure. Because it is a ketone after all, and they're quite sensitive to uh, alcohol condensations, or rather this condensation in general. So, potentially one of the catalysts, or um, the acid, the acetic acid caused it, I don't know. So that's the bulk of it. <laughs> but yeah, it's not that much, so the patent definitely is lying about something. Or maybe I'm doing it wrong. But it, it definitely is steam volatile, very steam volatile, because you can see most of it came over in the first Bit. Now there's still a tiny bit going over, but it's really not much. Glorious, we have isolated piss that smells like flowers and kind of burnt rubber because tar. But anyways, uh, trying to separate this, I guess. This is what we're left with. It smells like caramel and burnt coffee and um, strawberries, but like the, the the stem part of it, which doesn't smell like nice, just smells like grass and moss. I don't know what's in this, okay? It's just tar. Let's see here. Five grams. Amazing. Uh, 
after consulting our Lord and Savior, Wolfram Alpha, uh, I have concluded we have 4.9% yield, 5% yield. We have five grams of product and 5% yield. Yeah, this, this patent definitely is trying to make it not, you know, reproducible. Now the question is, what part of it is not reproducible? Now, they said, oh, you can use air for the oxidation. I have a feeling perhaps pure oxygen would be better because air is, of course, about 78% nitrogen. So a lot of the oxygen, so a lot of the um, vapors in the reactor would be carried out um, by the nitrogen remaining in the air. So the air just kind of just, it's like a steam distillation, basically. It just vaporizes and causes all the stuff to evaporate out. So that could be one cause of this low yield. I have a feeling that also the catalysts um, they use manganese acetate, coal acetate. Now they did not specify it as the hydrate. I may presumably what is the hydrate. So it could be water messing up the reaction. Uh, the air could also have to be dried because I'm not sure how water sensitive this is, but uh, glacial acetic acid does uh, pick up water very easily. Um, and again, the catalysts, I'm not sure um, how like both function because I don't know the mechanism of this reaction. I only have speculation and even that's not like, you know, an actual reaction diagram. So I have a feeling that it is possible that either one or both the catalysts are not good and they actually end up destroying product or destroying reactant because we are left with a bunch of mystery tar and I have to wonder what this actually is. I have a feeling it is aldol condensation tar or it is also just tar in general from the reaction. Because you can see it's oily. It doesn't mix with water either. So I think this is probably just the reaction destroying itself. And then also, of course, there is, um, in the patent it says, oh, you can recover the acetone after distillation. There's no acetone left after distillation. It's pure acetic acid, really. There's that and then the other one's sitting somewhere else. So I don't know what's going on here. It's now, we could probably determine a, um, or at least predict, or um, like, you know, a conjecture together a, um, a mechanism for this. Uh, first of all, we need to figure out if, how, how, um, how this reaction is actually selective. So instead of using acetone, maybe one could use, say, uh, methyl ethyl ketone. And um, then, of course, at the running reaction, see if it's a mixture of isomers of um, cyclohexyl butan one ohm and butan 2 ohm, or if it's just only one isomer, or it's the other isomer. And then, of course, I'd also love to see if there's any dimers or any other side products in here, because I don't have access to analysis equipment and analysis expenses, so I can't actually figure out what this reaction makes. All I know is that this smells like flowers and it boils at a high temperature. That's all I know about it, and that's yellow. And that's literally the only information I have about this stuff. So I'm not sure how pure it is. I, you know, I, I'm gonna give the benefit of the doubt and say that's pretty pure. But again, I have no actual basis in reality for saying that. So yeah, there's our product. It is a miserable amount, but I mean, the reaction works. It's just works really badly, poorly. So um, that'll be the end of this video, I guess. And then next video or, you know, next part of this series, I'm going to go ahead and try to do an animation on this, but, uh, yeah.